Now I believe uh, you understand the difference between system.out.print and system.out.println. Both these statements are used to display an output on the terminal window, which we have seen earlier. Now the same statement can be also be used to perform mathematical calculations. Interesting. So here, say for example, now let me write it on the board. Class my class static void main and out here let me write system dot out dot print ln five plus six. Note that I am not enclosing five plus six within the quotation mark. Indicating that since it is not within the quotation mark, it is going to evaluate this expression. So what happens is when we execute this particular program using the usual method which we had learned earlier, you will find that on the terminal window, if this is the terminal window, at the left hand corner you will find the output as 11. That is 5 plus 6 will be 11. In case we put a quotation mark out here, now look at the difference. Like the way we had printed uh, India earlier. In that case, it's going to display 5 plus 6. Because anything within the quotation mark is considered to be a string in Java. String means display it as it is. Now we are going to modify this further. Let me do something like this. Now see, this becomes more interesting. 5 plus 6 equal to, now this entire part is within the quotation mark. So it is going to display 5 plus 6 equal to, because whatever is, is within the quotation mark, it will be displayed as it is. Here, the meaning of plus means join. Join with a what? Join with the sum of 5 and 6. That is 11. So it's going to display this. Similarly, if we can perform subtraction, let me add one more statement to this. I'm going to subtract 7 and 5. Now this time what you're going to get is 7 minus 5 equal to so as usual 7 minus 5 equal to this is within quotation mark plus here once again it is used for joining not for addition and then join with what 7 minus 5 that is the difference 2. <coughs> so what we are what we are doing out here is whatever is within the quotation mark is going to print it as it is which is not within the quotation mark it's going to evaluate it now this plus or minus which we have learned out here are called mathematical operators. Now the different type of mathematical operators are plus for addition, minus for subtraction, slash for division, asterisk for multiplication and modulus to get a remainder. Say for example when 5 is Divided by 2, in case we want to get the remainder, we can use the modulus symbol. I'll give you an example to illustrate this. Plus for addition, minus for subtraction, slash for division. It performs integer division. Asterisk for multiplication, modulus to get the remainder. Now, say for example, we write 7 into 5. And here we write 7 modulus 5. Now 7 into 5 naturally it is going to evaluate it since it is not within the quotation mark. So 7 into 5 the output definitely it will show you as 35. 
and 7 modulus 5 when 7 is divided by 5 the remainder happens to be 2 so in this case it's going to display 2. When it comes to division you need to be more careful. I'll give you an example. Say for example we divide 5 by 2. When we divide 5 by 2 as expected the answer should be 2.5. But the problem is, computer makes integer division when both the numerator as well as the denominators are integers. So what it is going to do is, it is going to display 2 instead of 2.5. Now, if I write 5 divided by 2.0, this time it is going to display 2.5. The reason behind this is, 2.0 Java interprets it as a number with decimal point, so it understands, okay, since one of the number is in decimal point, we call it floating point number, the resultant should be in decimal point. If both are integers, it should be an integer. So that is why you need to be very careful when we are dividing, if both the numerator and denominators are integers, the resultant will be an integer. That is, you are only going to get the quotient. If one of the number is a floating point number, either 5.0 or 2.0 or both of them are with 0, .0 you are going to get the result as 2.5. That is the answer will also be of floating point depth. Having said that, you can also perform it this way. Now look at this, I'm typecasting it as float type 5 by 2. This is called typecasting. More of this we are going to cover later, but currently please note this. Typecasting means you are telling Java, please give me the answer in float type. Float type means in decimal point. So 5 by 2, although both are integers, when integer is divided by integer, we have seen in this case, it gives an integer. In this case, although it's an integer, float within parenthesis, within the bracket indicates that you are telling Java, please give me the answer in decimal. So this time, you are also going to get 2.5. So either one of the number is of float type, that means add a point zero to it, or you need to do type casting to get the correct answer. Otherwise, when you divide an integer by integer, you are always going to get an integer. Now the next topic of discussion will be, variables. When I talk about variables, variables are names given to different part of the memory location. Now when I talk about the memory, I am talking about the RAM. So variables are simply names given to different parts of the memory, which we are going to use to store data. Java requires that every time you give a name or you use a part of this memory, you need to tell what type of data it's going to store. For example, we are going to work only with very few data types, that is with integer and float type numbers. So here, I'm going to give you an example. When I write int a, b and c, this indicates that a, b and c are three memory locations, three spaces in the RAM which has the name a, b and c. You can imagine it to be something like this. This is a memory space with the name a, this is another memory space with the name b, this is another memory space with the name c. And the int indicates that all these memory spaces that you have created can store integers, that is number without a point. So now let me store the value 5 inside a. So we can write a equals to 5. Note that a equals to 5, although it looks uh, algebraic in nature, but you cannot write the other way around. You cannot write 5 equal to a. Although both means the same in algebra, but in computer, particularly in Java, it means assign the value on the right hand side of equal to 
to the left hand side variable or memory location. So this isn't correct. This means assign the, that is why this is also called assignment operator. So assign the value of 5 to A. So you can imagine inside the memory location 5 it is going to get stored out there in the memory location with the name A. In case I want to store 6 inside B, so you can write simply B equal to 6 followed by semicolon. You can see I have a semicolon after every line. So B equal to 6 indicates I am storing 6 inside the variable B. Now what we are going to do is we are going to add these two variables. C equals to A plus B. This time the value of A and B that is 5 and 6 respectively are going to get added and it is going to get stored inside the variable C. So 5 and 6 when added gives 11 and 11 gets stored out here. Now you see this. If I write system dot out dot print sum equal to C. Now you see system dot out dot print. This is the usual output statement. Sum equal to is with a quotation mark. So it's going to display the output as sum equal to. Followed by C. C means since this is not within quotation, it understands that this is a variable, it has a certain content. And the content of C in our case was 11, so it's going to display sum equal to 11. This is how it works. Similarly, if you want to do multiplication, you can write A into B. If you want more variables, you can carry on adding. Suppose, say for example, I am going to divide two integers and store the result in decimal point. So what we can do is, uh, we'll take two variables a and b of integer type. However, where we are going to store the result, I'm going to take it as float type. Float, as I mentioned earlier, in Java means number with decimal point. So let me store inside a 11, inside b Two. And let me take another variable, say float type C. Now what we can do is, we can write C equal to A divided by B. Now if you look at the memory location, so inside A, what did we store? We stored 11. Inside B, what did we store? We stored 2. Inside C, A divided by B. Now since both A and B are of integer type, it is going to, this, it is going to store 5 instead of 5.5. However, 11 divided by 2 is 5.5. So what we do is we need to time cast it. We need to tell Java, please give me the answer in point. So now what Java does is it divides 11 with 2 but gives the answer in point, that is 5.5. And since C is a variable of float type, it has the capability of storing the number in point. So it's this time, it's going to store 5.5. So now when I write system.out.println, result equal to C, it is going to display the output as do not forget the closing braces for the method and for the class. This is how it works with variable. This is how you can declare variables. So here, please remember, you cannot declare integer and float type variables together. Use separate lines. One point I just want to mention that when you declare variables, all integer variables should be in the same line. In the same line, same line in Java means until we put a semicolon. In Java, semicolon indicates the end of line. So what happens is, we can even write float C out here. It still means the same thing. That is, A and B, these are both integers. Semicolon means this particular line has ended. Float C is a separate line where C is a variable of float type. That means it can hold number in decimal. 
Now, let me tell you something. Every time we execute these programs, which we had done earlier and right now, you'll find that always it gives you the same result. That if you execute this method, that is the main method, which we had learned earlier, any number of times, it's always going to give, give you the result as 5.5 because always it's going to divide 11 with 2 and result is obvious 5.5. That is why it is going to give you that. In case I want to get a different set of numbers, we can simply bring the program in the text editor and we can change these values to get a different set of number. Now we are going to try something else. What we are going to do is we are going to take two values from the user. We call it input technically. We are going to input two values from the user and then we are going to evaluate it. Say for example, we are going to add these two numbers and display the result. That is how we are going to work. So in this case, what we are going to do is a lot of things has to be done out here in this particular problem. The very first thing what we need to do is we need to import a package to perform any kind of input operation in Java through the keyboard. So what we are going to do is we can write import. This is uh, note that it is even before the class. Java.util.scanner or you can just put an asterisk out there. It still works. About or regarding package, I'm going to talk in details later on. Currently, for performing any kind of input through the keyboard, we are going to import this particular package. Next, what we need to do is, we need to create a scanner type object. The scanner type object is responsible for scanning the keyboard to get some value from the keyboard from the user. So we are going to create a scanner type object. That is the name of the object which I have given. This can be any name. Now this is the primary thing which you need to create to accept any kind of user input. Scanner. Scanner, please note that the first letter is in capital. SC is the name of the object. This can be any user defined name equal to new all small again scanner where s is in capital and within parenthesis we need to write system dot in where s is in capital system dot in indicates from the system's input device that is in our case from the keyboard now what we are going to do is we are going to take three variables of integer type because i'm going to accept two integer values from the user find their sum and display the answer So I've taken three variables a, b, c because I need to store three different integers. Now what I'm going to do is instead of initializing a with a certain value and b with a certain value which makes the answer always fixed. What we are going to do is we are going to make Java ask for some value from the user. So what we do is we can give a message system.out.println enter two numbers so now what happens is this particular message will be displayed when this program gets executed that is enter two numbers now you see what is going to happen is a equal to sc dot next int similarly b equal to sc dot next int Looks complicated, but it isn't that complicated. Let's see what actually happens. The real program actually begins from here. Remember, I have taken three memory spaces named A, B, and C. Now look at the first statement. System.out.println enter two numbers. This is written within quotation mark. And which we have already learned earlier that whatever is within the quotation mark, it will be displaced as it is on the terminal window. So in this case, the first message the computer is going to display on the terminal window is enter two numbers. Even that colon is within the quotation mark, so 
This is the first message it gives us. And then you will see there is an input bar below the terminal window. You can just see if this is the terminal window. Somewhere below you will find that there is an input bar where th there will be a cursor blinking. There is a blinking vertical line which indicates a cursor. You will find this cursor blinking out there. Indicating that you need to give a value. And that is why this message which is quite relevant and the user can understand what is to be done. So here the blinking vertical cursor indicates that it wants some value. So what we are going to do is this time I am going to enter say 10. So when I enter the value 10 and hit the enter key on the keyboard the value 10 gets inside the variable A. And then you will find that again you find the input bar out there. Again with the blanks. This is because it is waiting for the second value. So this time let me give 12 and hit the enter key. So what actually happens is when I execute it, you must have observed that I am giving two different values. So first value was 10, second value was 12. Now when I hit the enter key, it comes to the next line. And in the next line what we are going to do is we are going to add these two numbers and display the sum. Now what actually happens is these two values A and B gets added that is in our case 10 and 12 gets added and gets stored inside C. So the value of C is 22. Now system.out.println and sum equal to once again within quotation mark it is going to display sum equal to followed by C. So it is going to display 22. In certain terminal windows it even shows the input. Say it will display the input out here 10 and 12. It can even display that. It is not necessary. What is necessary is it is going to display the output as sum equal to 22. This is a very important aspect. Now say for example again I execute this program. Again when I execute this program what actually happens is again it is going to give me the message enter two numbers. As this is already within the quotation mark. Once again you get the input bar. Say for example this time I input 5. So the value of 5 gets inside the variable a. And again you get the input bar waiting for the value of B. Say I input 6. So that value is assigned to the variable B. So A and B are 5 and 6 respectively. This two when added gets adds up to 11 which gets stored inside the variable C. So it, this becomes 11. Now when, when this statement is executed system.out.println sum equal to C it is going to display sum equal to 11. So have you noted that in the previous case when we executed the program we used the value 10 and 12 to add those two set of numbers. Next time when I executed the program the same program but we could add a different set of numbers that is 5 and 6. This is how exactly a calculator works though a calculator has a much bigger functionality but in a very small way we have just designed a calculator which can perform calculation in the sense that it is going to add two numbers, two integers which may be of any value. So this particular program will allow you to give any two integers which can then be added and then executed. Okay. Now what we are going to do is we are going to modify this program. Uh, to find the average of two numbers. So instead of uh, finding the sum of two numbers and these two numbers are given by the user, we are going to find the average of any two numbers which is given by the user, that is input by the user. So what we are going to do is, we are going to take two integers. So I and T and B. However, you must be remembering that when it comes to finding average, the average may be in decimal point. So that is why we need to take the variable C as float time because inside this variable we are going to store the average. So here the same thing enter two numbers followed by two numbers. 
Now let us find the average of these two numbers which are stored in A and B. So what we are going to do is we can write C equal to do not forget the float A plus B divided by 2. A plus B divided by 2 this will give you the average that is add the two numbers A and B followed by divided by 2 which I need to type cast it at flow, float to force Java to give me the answer in decimal point. So now we can print it system.out.println we can give a proper message average C. Now if you run this program, once again the same thing happens. First it gives a message, enter two numbers, followed by the input box, which allows you to input two numbers, one after the other, upon hitting the enter key. After that, these two numbers that the user has entered will be added and then divided by two. The float within parenthesis is used to tell Java to give the answer in decimal point, And then we print the message average equal to and then join it with the actual average which we have stored inside the variable c. Note that the variable c has to be taken of float type to indicate that the answer is in decimal point.